Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today I'm really excited to share with you a formulation for these lovely Chocolate Rasool Pressed Shampoo Bars. I started working on this formulation back in March, but really kicked it into high gear this summer when I was gifted a bath bomb press from Lee at The Bath Bomb Press, which is an Edmonton-based bath bomb press company and they make beautiful beautiful bath bomb presses and so once mine arrived and i got it set up with the air compressor it's wonderful i knew one of the very first things that i wanted to try pressing was this formulation that i had been toying with for a few months already the bulk of these shampoo bars is a blend of two anionic solid surfactants in the little stick or noodle form so there's sodium cocoa isothionate and sodium cocoa sulfate and so these come together to create just the most gorgeous lather and there is a demo at the end of the video helping to moisten and hold together those dry surfactants is some cocoa mitopropyl betaine an amphoteric surfactant and some melted cocoa butter and stearic acid which help bind everything together quite nicely once they uh, set up once they are no longer melted that cocoa scent does come through in the end product and then I have further complemented that with some cocoa-y fragrance oils but you could also choose some essential oils that pair nicely with a chocolatey scent so something like mint or orange or benzoin would really be lovely Something else I've done with these shampoo bars that I'm really excited about is I've included a pretty good dose of Rasool Clay. Rasool Clay is historically famous for hair care, really helping to deep clean the hair. It also gives us that brown color that pairs really nicely with the chocolate scent theme. I was initially a bit concerned about whether or not the Rasool clay would make these bars possibly unstable, more prone to spoilage, but I've tested them pretty thoroughly and haven't noticed anything. I even left one just kind of wet and mashed up in a plastic bag for about two months and it is totally fine. Now you'll be happy to hear you don't need a press to make these. You can hand press them into a mold and there's more discussion of that on the blog. In this video though, I am showing the bath bomb press in action using the cube mold to press these shampoo bars. So you will get a slightly different view of me and my studio for that section of this video. The framing of the shot kind of ends up with me mostly headless throughout because I was trying to really let the bath bomb press shine but I feel like it looks a little weird having me headless, so I don't know, I look forward to hearing your feedback on that. As always, please make sure you are reading the partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below. There is some more extended discussion of the formulation and of the drying times. I made quite a few of these and weighed them as they dried out over time, so while I say 24 hours is the minimum, I find that a week to 10 days is kind of that sweet spot for amount of water loss and, and drying that happens versus uh, the amount of time that it takes for that to happen. If you are looking for more resources on shampoo bars, I recommend checking out Lise Anderson and Rebecca Wright's book on shampoo bars and check out Ariane Arsenault. She also has some wonderful videos on press shampoo on her YouTube channel and she shares her formulation with her patrons. So come on, let's get started. So to start with, we have two phases. We have our sort of our surfactant phase and we have our heated phase. So we're going to begin by combining the ingredients for a heated phase in this small heat resistant glass measuring cup. So you're going to need 10 and a half grams of cocoa butter, four and a half grams of stearic acid and 18.75 grams Rasool clay. To melt this, we're going to pop it in a water bath. And this is a small saucepan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go put this on the stove top for about 20 minutes to melt everything through. For our surfactant phase, I'm gonna talk you through everything here and then I'm going to pop my dust mask on because once the solid surfactants start to sort of get agitated in the air, inhaling them is incredibly unpleasant. So in this heat resistant glass measuring cup, and this is a two cup or 500 milliliter Pyrex, we have 60 grams of sodium cocoa isothionate and you can see that it is in the stick form. We have 45 grams of sodium cocoa sulfate, nine grams of cocoa mitopropyl betaine and our fragrance and preservatives. And so remember, all of this is written out in the description box below the video. So if you want more details, make sure you're checking there or referring to the blog post also linked in the description box below the video. So now I'm going to pop on my dust mask. This is a great one that I got from Lee Valley that has worked really well. Make sure your dust mask fits nice and tightly because these little dudes really love to just get into your airways and it sucks. Once the fats have melted, you can remove the water bath from the heat and then remove your measuring cup from the water bath. So our next step is going to be pouring this 
into this and then stirring it around. I like to use a stiffer metal stirring instrument for this part. These just are a little bit delicate considering how stiff the mixture is going to be. Uh, and I am going to put my dust mask on again because we will be agitating these and just inhaling them is, is gross. So better safe than sorry. Okay, so now that this is nice and thoroughly blended, I'm going to divide it in two because we're going to make two 75 gram bars. So I've got a scale here and we're just gonna kind of weigh half of this back into there and then we can start pressing. Okay, let's press some shampoo bars. So I'm going to use the cube mold for the bath bomb press. So you can see it's a three, three piecer here. A uh, big part of the reason why I've weighed these out ahead of time is because this mold is so sturdy and so heavy that it actually tops out the maximum weight on my scale there. So it kind of assembles like this, and then we pop the top on, and then this part is um, going to come down and Thor punch it together. So we're going to transfer one batch of our mixture in here and press it. So now I've only got about half of the mixture in here, but this is already looking pretty full. So at this point in time, we kind of have to start uh, squishing it down a bit to make room for it. And then obviously the, the press will do the final squish. So that is our full sort of 75 grams uh, in there, sort of packed just as much as needed to get it to actually fit. So now we're gonna put this in so it goes with the sculpty sculpty side down. So I have this set to just shy of 90 PSI, which is the maximum uh, PSI you wanna be using with a flat top mold and then it is less for the spherical molds. So I'm gonna hold the safety down and then we're gonna press. So we did get a little bit of transfer on the molds. I find that you can line them, but it um, it's quite fussy in my experience thus far, at least. So I'm finding that a little bit of uh, a little bit of loss to the top and bottom isn't that big of a deal. I'm going to transfer the uh, bits that came off this one into the next one, and then I'm going to wipe these down with a microfiber cloth before we continue. And here are our two little 75-ish gram shampoo bars. So you do want to let them dry for at least a day before using them. Uh, if you want more discussion on that, um, I recommend checking out the blog post. Here are two that I made a week ago. This one was hand pressed. And again, for details on that, please see the blog. And this one was bath bomb press pressed. You can see that they do change a little bit in appearance as they dry out. And I can definitely feel a difference. This one definitely feels a little bit wetter than these ones do. If you'd like a demo of how much these bubble up, I've got a little bit of the uh, leftover surfactanty bits in the bottom of this measuring cup and I'm going to give it a blitz with a little milk frother. So you can see that lather is crazy thick. It's supporting the uh, kind of hole from pulling the milk frother out, but just like, it's gorgeous. This is really dense rich, fluffy, beautiful lather. And I absolutely adore how it feels uh, in my hair, how it makes my hair feel. And it also makes a fabulous body wash. So if you just kind of want to have one sudsy thing in your shower, this will absolutely do the trick. And there you go. We just made some beautiful pressed Rasool clay shampoo bars using the bath bomb press. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please remember to check out the description box below this video for the link to this post on my blog where you'll find a lot more information and helpful links. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.